What's up guys, in this video, I wanna show you exactly what you need to know as well as understand to be able to factor by grouping. All right, now you might be looking at this problem, you're like, hey, this doesn't look like the problem I'm currently working on. Like, I need help on a polynomial that's all the way expanded out. And that's okay. Like, if you can understand what I'm about to teach you in this video, you are going to be um, prepared to be able to factor by grouping for any type of polynomial um, that you're gonna work with. This is actually at like the second step and of a typical polynomial that we'd factor by grouping. But it's usually the step where students make the mistake um, with their understanding of what they're trying to achieve with factor by grouping. So that's why I wanna start the problem here. But before we go ahead and finish this problem, I wanna make sure you can understand like what exactly we're trying to achieve and what exactly we were looking for by factoring by grouping. So to do that, what I wanted to do is just kind of talk about like a quick, you know, usually the first step in factoring, which is just going to be factoring out the GCF. And to get in a problem that's gonna look like that, that's usually what you do, right? You group the first two terms, you group the last two terms, and you factor out the GCF. You factor out what they have in common. You divide out what we have in common. We have a lot of words to describe what we're trying to achieve when we're factoring out the GCF. But a lot of times, sometimes like it doesn't really make a lot of sense um, for students. So what I wanna do in, the, in to kind of start off is just to, to understand is like, all right, they have in common an X, right? So they both share an X, and, but sometimes that's not very visible for students to understand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna break this down as a product of its prime factors. Okay, so now what I want you to see is these two terms that are separated by addition share an X, right, in both terms. So what we're gonna do is we call like factor that out. That's what they have in common. We're gonna factor it out. We're going to divide it out. But the important thing is we just can't like randomly divide out a term, right? The idea, what we're looking for, whenever we say factoring, what we're trying to achieve is rewriting an expression as a multiplication problem. So when I go ahead and divide by X, by both of these, because that's what they have in common, right? These X's now are going to divide out. And what am I gonna be left with? I'm gonna be left with an X times X, which is a X squared plus a three. And a lot of students will just kind of leave it there and they'll be like, oh, I'm done. But does x cubed plus 3x equal x squared plus 3? No. So like, where did this x go? When we divide it out, what we're doing is we're rewriting it as multiplication. So that x is going to go right here. Because what this is saying is, when you divide it out, right, the inverse operation of division is multiplication. So by dividing about the x, you now have created a, an expression that is equivalent to your original expression. The difference is this is written as multiplication and this is written as addition. And again, you can always check your work, right? x times x squared is x cubed, x times three is going to be three x. So find what they have in common and then divide out that common term out of both your expressions. Just make sure that you rewrite that on the outside as multiplication. Now, a lot of times students, like, I mean, even algebra one, pre-algebra, like they kind of get the understanding of the GCF, they kind of get the idea, they can follow the rules, and then we start to give them a problem that is going to deal with an expression, like the problem we're working on here, and everything that they learn, kind of learn just flies out the window. Now, this one might look a lot more difficult, but in reality, just notice what I did. Rather than just using an X, all I did was I just rewrote this as an X plus one, right? So I just put parentheses around those expressions, and I just added a one. So it's really not that much more difficult than what we originally did. And we're just gonna wanna look at this the exact same way. I don't really need to expand x plus one times x plus one times x plus one. Hopefully you recognize that both these expressions represent an x plus one. So when I divide out this x plus one, it's gonna be on the outside of the parentheses, and then I just need to figure out, well, what was left over? When I divided that out, right, or factored it out, what's left over? Well, I have a x cubed divided by an x. Remember that you can technically think about that as x to the first power. So the rules of exponents say like you subtract the powers. So that's gonna be an x plus one squared. And then here, the x plus ones are gonna just gonna divide out. That's gonna leave me with a three. Okay, so I went through all of this stuff so you can understand this problem. And the reason why I want you to understand this problem is like right now, this is at like the second phase. This looks like this. I need these two expressions to have something in common. And unfortunately, you can see inside these parentheses, they do not have anything in common. Now, a lot of students might look at the x's and say, oh, I could factor out the x. And technically, yes, you could. But that's not gonna get us to a problem that we can have purely written as multiplication. Like that's just gonna take us an x times this whole expression. So when we're looking for, when we're looking at factoring, we wanna look at, you know, once we've typically factored out the GCF, that was usually the first step, then we arrive here. Now what we need to do is get these parentheses to be exactly the same. In this case, you might not say, well, they're not exactly the same, right? So I can actually go one more step further and recognize like, is there anything else I can factor out of here? Like you might've factored out the GCF uh, or factored something out, but realize you didn't factor out the greatest common factor. And so what I want you to recognize here is I can actually factor out a two in these two expressions and I can factor out a four in these two expressions. Hopefully that will now give me a simplified answer that I can further factor down. So let's go and see when I factor that out, see what I get. Okay, so now what I want you to see is again, these two terms are separated by this addition problem, right? That is the important thing right there. 
So again, what are we looking for now that they have in common? What we're looking for is what's inside these parentheses that are going to be exactly the same. Now again, you could go ahead and factor out the two and you can factor out the x, but for this point, what I wanna do is just focus on the parentheses. Let's just do one thing at a time, all right? So let's focus on these two expressions that are separated by subtraction and let's factor these out, right? Because you can see that they both have these in common. So I'm gonna factor these out. And by doing that, now let's go and see what I'm left over with. I'm gonna be left over with a 2x as well as a 4x um, times 16. So therefore, that's gonna be a Okay, and so now you can see that like, yeah, you could have done this, like now we can do the second step and you say, all right, well now, now these both share a two and an X so I can factor out that GCF and now I can get to my final answer. And voila, now we have factored this polynomial by grouping. I hope you now have a better understanding of what you're trying to look for when you need to factor a polynomial by grouping. In the next video, I'll go through an example that looks like factoring by grouping, but you're actually gonna use substitution to help you factor it. It's an interesting problem and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.